Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new League of Legends video. So Karma got buffed not too long ago and I did predict that she will be rising in popularity. And it definitely seems like that is the case because not only is her play rate going up but we're starting to see her in LCS more frequently. Phoenix from Team Liquid was actually playing her in the LCS to quite success. I've been seeing her a lot more in solo queue whether it's mid lane, top lane or even support and I've just overall been seeing a lot more people talk about her. Now I made a straw poll on my Facebook and Twitter asking if you guys want me to talk about Valkaz or Karma and just barely Karma ended up winning the vote so here's this video. So throughout this video I'll be talking about AP Karma in the mid lane. We'll talk about the positives, negatives, runes, items, build, masteries, tips and tricks and everything you need to know about Karma in the mid lane. Right before we get into the topic the question of this video is who do you think will win EU LCS finals and NA LCS finals? Personally I think TSM will win for NA LCS and Origin will win for EU LCS. And if you end up enjoying this video please make sure to hit that like button to let me know. But let's get right into things. So the positives and negatives of playing Karma in the mid lane. She recently got buffed to her Mantra E ability where not only will it have a higher base shield, but it also now has double the AP ratios prior to the buff. So obviously this makes her E ability with the Mantra exceptionally strong and something you should really focus on. But on top of this, her AP ratios on all of her abilities are very high, much higher than I expected initially. Her Mantra Q ability, if you hit both parts of it, has a 150% AP ratio, on top of the already quite decent base damage it provides. Now some people might already know this, but a big plus for me is if a champion has a lot of options in their kit, then that's a really really good thing. And luckily for us, Karma does have a lot of options. Whether it's your Mantra Q for absolute massive damage, your Mantra W for the extra CC and to catch someone off and the HP regeneration, or your Mantra E ability when it comes to chasing or running away, or just giving everyone a big shield within a teamfight, that can really just change a teamfight very easily. And based on which Mantra you decide to use and how you end up using it, that can be the difference between winning a teamfight and losing it. Her laning phase is also quite strong because her Q cost is extremely low up until you max it to rank 5 at which it's still fairly low. The range on it is quite nice, the AoE once you actually hit a target is surprisingly larger than you would think. So not only are you able to harass quite effectively but you're also able to push in the lane from level 1. When you're sieging down towers you're able to throw out the Q and the Mantra Q as well for some decent poke, you're able to shield any potential damage that the enemy team is throwing at you. She also has really nice engage potential with her E ability or her Mantra E and even has some fairly decent to wave clear even though I don't think it's the best in the world because it does require some very specific positioning in order to get the Mantra Q down on every single minion. But on top of having many options in her kit, she also has many options when it comes to building your items because there's several build paths based on what your team has and what the enemy team has. But moving on to the negatives, while she only has one real damage spell being her Q, she doesn't really have a true ultimate since her R is available from level 1. Her Q does require some good positioning in order to throw down a meaningful Q and also her mantra will give away your next move because well it shows a big animation and she has a whole speech that she says. Now hopefully you have a better idea about AP Karma mid lane as to why it's strong and why it could be not so strong. So next let us jump into some tips and tricks to remember whenever you decide to play Karma in the mid lane or even Karma in general. The first tip and a very useful one at that is to use your mantra W on the jungle to regain easy HP. Whether you're in the laning phase or you just finished a team fight and you need to heal up very quickly quickly and then maybe go back into the fight, go into the jungle, mantra up, use your W on some monster, it'll regain you about half of your HP depending on how low you are, and you can instantly go right back and be good to go. She's also exceptionally strong when it comes to pushing in the lane very early because you have access to your mantra Q from level 1. So especially if you're laning against someone like an assassin who has a very difficult time to see us under tower, maybe like LeBlanc or even Fizz, mantra Q the ranged minions at the very beginning and then throw one more Q and that should be enough to kill them. And you can keep Keep spamming your Q ability fairly often because not only is the range great and it's quite easy to land and harass with, but the mana cost isn't anything too high. Here's how a typical harass combo in the laning phase can look like. First, you use your E ability to absorb any potential retaliation and also for the move speed to gap close. Use your W on the target for some extra damage and mainly for the roots, and then follow up with the Mantra Q just a split second before the root is about to land. Because this will guarantee that they'll take both parts of your Q ability. But if you're going in for the kill and they're fairly low on HP then make sure to wait on the Mantra Q until you either finally root them or they flash and then you can follow up with the Mantra Q. On top of this you can also use your Mantra Q on the race whether it's your own race or the enemy 
rates for free CS because it is going to be just enough damage to kill the small ones. One good mantra Q in a team fight, if it's on three or more players, is going to be absolutely massive and can solely win you the team fight. But you have to make sure to be patient with it, and if you have to, also make sure to use your mantra E ability at the beginning ish of the team fight and then wait it out, keep auto attacking, keep throwing your Q and W, get the cooldown lowered on your mantra ability, and then wait for that beautiful finish on the mantra Q. And after playing Karma for a few games, I figured out a pretty cool thing you can do with her mantra. Obviously, when you activate her mantra ability, the R, Karma ends up saying a whole speech, and she also has this big animation that plays, letting everyone around her know that she just activated her R ability. But what you can do is step into the fog, especially in the laning phase, activate your mantra, and then you have a few seconds to obviously walk back into lane and still use the ability that's empowered, but the animation won't be as obvious, and the speech won't be heard. So you can essentially hide the cast animation of the mantra. Alright guys, now that you have some tips and tricks to keep in mind whenever playing Karma and hopefully these will improve your overall Karma gameplay, let's go into the more basic stuff and talk about what abilities to level up and the summoner spells to take. So first off, talking about the abilities to level, at level 1, you want to get your Q ability first because you can mantra Q in a big team fight if it happens at level 1, and in the laning phase you have the ability to start pushing in the way from level 1, especially if you mantra Q it. However, following that level 2, you want to get your E ability, and then usually you want to get your W at level 3, but if you're feeling like the laning phase is fairly passive and you're not too scared of a jungle gank, just put another point into your Q at level 3. But if you do that, then you have to put the point into W at level 4. And in terms of how you want to max your abilities, you always want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can, then you want to max out your Q, followed by your E, followed by your W. And then when it comes to the summoner spells, I almost always like to go flash and teleport because it gives you a better laning phase. It also helps you roam a lot and go to other lanes, but going flash heal or flash barrier isn't all that bad either, but for the most part flash teleport should be your go-to. Alright guys, it's time to talk about arguably one of the more important parts of these videos, the build. And as usual, I'll first be starting off by talking about the runes and the masteries. So first talking about the masteries, you go a very simple and standard 12 18 0 page. At the end of the day guys, don't forget you are still playing an AP mid lane champion, so you still want some damage in there. This is why you go the Thunder Lords while also specking the rest of the points into Ferocity. If you really want to, you can definitely put the other 12 points into the Resolve Tree, but I highly recommend leaving it as is. And then moving over to the rune page, for this one I have Magic Penetration Reds, either HP per level or Armor Yellows, again depending on whatever you're facing in the mid lane, Flat AP Quince, and then I have just enough CDR per level blues to give me 10% at level 18 and the rest being Flat Magic Resistance. The one and only thing I'd recommend switching up with this page is to instead make every single blue rune a CDR per level blue rune. Ultimately it shouldn't make the biggest difference in the world, but that's something to keep in mind. Because we are going to be going for 30% plus CDR with every single build I'll give you. But speaking of the builds, let's talk about the items to buy next. So I'll be discussing this part a little bit differently than I usually do in these types of videos because there really isn't any core item for Karma. I mean I guess you can consider the Death Cap and the Void Staff core, but those are core in a lot of mid lane mages. So instead I divided up the different builds based on what you're trying to accomplish. The starting items is going to be usually a Doran's Ring followed by some HP potions because it just simply works. But this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Now again, you have to look at what does your team have in terms of damage, in terms of tankiness, and what does the enemy team have in terms of damage, in terms of engage, and type of damage. The first one is going to be the full AP build. Now if the enemy team doesn't have a ridiculous amount of damage, and your team has a fair amount of tankiness, then this is the build you want to go to maximize your damage output. With the 10% CDR from your runes and the Morale Anomalcon plus blue buff, that's going to be exactly exactly 40%. Next up we have the utility build, this one you go usually if the enemy team doesn't have a whole lot of escape and your team has a fair amount of damage already and you can go for the slightly more utility route. So what this means is you go for the Frost Queen's Claim again for the CDR for the extra move speed reduction. After that you can definitely go for the Abyssal Scepter if they have a fair amount of magic damage. If they don't then I highly recommend going either the Rod of Aegis or the Morella Nomicon. Obviously if you go for the Morella Nomicon you shouldn't get the Lucidity Boots and instead you should go 
go for the Sork Boots. But the final build I'll be talking about is the anti-dive tanky type build. This one heavily depends on the enemy team. If they have a lot of dive and assassin type champions that are just going to be rushing you down and trying to kill you, you definitely want to go for this build. It's very similar to the one right above it, but instead for this one you usually want to go Rod of Ages and the Frost Queen's Claim on top of the Abyssal Scepter. If maybe your team lacks a little bit of damage and they have also a lot of engage, then you want to go the Rod of Ages followed by the Ludens Echo and just skip out completely on the Frost Queen's Claim. Obviously if they have next to no magic damage then instead of the Abyssal Scepter you can probably go for the Zhonya's Hourglass. But either way guys, with this build you should also reach 30% cooldown reduction plus 40% with your blue buff. This is overall just to give you a rough idea because like I said, it really just depends on what your team has and what the enemy team has. But as usual, we will be ending off this video by talking about my final rating of Karma. I'll be giving her a very respectable 7 out of 10, but it could potentially even be a 7.5 out of 10. Out of 10. I don't think Karma mid is the next OP broken absolutely busty mid laner like maybe Graves was top or Poppy or at the state that current tank Echo in the top lane is. But I do definitely think it is a very strong pick and you should definitely watch out for it. Like I said earlier, she's pretty much the new Lulu of the mid lane and Lulu was never considered to be an absolutely broken OP champion. But she has been considered for the most part a very good and strong pick that can fit into many different team compositions. But that is about it for this video guys, there you have it, my take on Karma in the mid lane. A fairly strong pick that I'm not surprised that we're seeing much more frequently and I do recommend picking it up especially if you like the type of playstyle. If you guys did enjoy this video or learned something new or whatever, please make sure to hit that like button to show your support, share this with your friends so everyone else has the better idea about Karma in the mid lane and why we're seeing it so often, and whether or not it's very very strong or just very mediocre. Definitely make sure to check out my other videos as well and here are my favorite answers from the previous video's question, which assassin champion would you rework? I thank each and every one of you so much for watching and I hope to see you for the next video. Peace.